Hello everyone and welcome back to the Glosser channel. I'm here today again with Janine House to discuss matters pertaining to COVID-19, the coronavirus. How are you doing today, Janine? Yeah, good, thanks, Robert. Good to see you. Thank you. Now we're all going what's become known as lockdown fatigue. The yeah. coronavirus has been with us for more than 18 months now, but you have some important updates and hopefully there is some light on the horizon with what you've been looking to in recent times. I'm hoping that I can give some, um, some positive encouragement and empowerment to everybody today um, based on uh, the research that I've been doing and a lot of information that's been coming across my desk as well. Um, so I'm happy to say that uh, things are a lot better than than they seem and if we go to the law we're going to find a lot of a lot of great answers and that's what I'd like to share today. Well look I think it's important that we're having this conversation today you and I were speaking off camera a moment ago about how stressful things have been for everyone mm. we are certainly feeling it you and I mm. and the circle of people around us but mm. we are by far not the only ones going through those sort of circumstances mm. as I said they're calling it lockdown fatigue mm created a lot of restrictions in people's lives there's no real high points in people's lives there's yeah. no parties celebrations limited numbers of guests at weddings everyone's operating to a very mundane restricted way of life mm. and I believe it's not over yet we've got a long way to go mm. but what's happening now I believe is that there are lawyers who are willing to speak out mm -hmm. and willing to fight the battle for us rather than us simply doing this on our own mm. what I'm talking about is getting in some colleagues or some affiliates to help us Mm. And I think you've got some good information on where that is leading at the moment. Right, yes, okay. So there's um, quite a number of court cases um, in action at the moment um, around the country. Um, there's a Supreme Court case in New South Wales happening this morning. I believe it was, um, it was moved from yesterday to today. I'm not aware of what the results of that are. I believe it's been led by GNB lawyers. Um, but I do have the results of a tribunal hearing that was conducted in South Australia Australia on the 5th of August um, that is extremely big news and um, would really like to share that today. Um, I'd also like to share uh, the, the, the results of that is, is the call to uh, the people who are enforcing these COVID policies to cease and desist and because they are illegal and so I'd like to cover that a little bit more and uh, read out some of the letters and show you where you can find them and um, tell you what you can do and tell you where you can go to find out what's happening. Okay, so you mentioned this court case was on the 5th of August and yes. when you said it was a case to determine whether things are actually legal or not, what types of things are we talking about? Are we talking about border closures, stay at home orders, work from home orders, forced mandatory compulsory vaccination, all of the above? Is it of which topics was that court case trying to address? Okay. Um I'm not a lawyer, so I've got to, I've got to really um, issue a... Um, a caveat. A, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. I've got to uh, basically um, just cover myself here by saying I'm not giving legal advice. I can tell you where to go and look it up yourself. And I'm giving my understanding based on what I've read so far, but it's not comprehensive. So I'm... I, I'm alerting you to it and encouraging you to do further research. So um, to give you a bit of information about this ruling, I am going to read it. <clears throat> so that way um, you're getting the information directly that has come from a lawyer and this is what they state. I'm just going to, I'm going to read this in answer to your question sure and we will get down the track to answer the question what does this cover in terms of the COVID policies but I'm going to start at the beginning and read it. Um, so Linda from the Centrum Group has announced 
that GMB lawyers uh, released a tweet which stated, uh, and I'm going to read the tweet, um, Mr Scott Morrison MP lost big time today. National Cabinet is not part of the Federal Cabinet. All of its decisions have no legal force. You are free to ignore them, including the one of 28th of June 2021 mandating COVID-19 jabs for aged care workers. See here. And it provided a PDF of the judgment in the post below. See the PDF beginning Patrick. So you can go to that tweet um, which is by GMB Lawyers and you can click on the link to the PDF and you can read the PDF for yourself. That PDF is the ruling and the comment here is that Scott Morrison has his lawyers defending this. It's obviously a huge veto of his criminal policies. So what this means is we need to get the word out. We are mailing the Governor General and State Governors to demand the Prime Minister or State Premiers are removed from office using this format. Dear Governor General or State Governor, please see the attached PDF. This judgment confirms that National Cabinet has no executive or legislative power. Every national cabinet decision that has ever been implemented by the states is unlawful. As a result, I demand the removal of the Prime Minister or relevant Premier from office immediately. Yours, uh, and then it has the address for David Hurley, Governor General, and so on. Uh, the next plan is to write to all state and territory MPs and all senators to cease and desist in carrying out the illegal orders of this National Cabinet. A PDF of each MP and senator is attached in the post below. The implications of this judgment are enormous and include making illegal the indemnity of GPs and administering the VAX. Any mandatory VAX request by aged care or other employers to name a couple. Please provide the document to your employers, the businesses, police, doctors, etc. Please also share this comprehensive message in all your groups along with immediately posting the three PDFs. So as I mentioned, I've read the email out to you in its entirety, um, just so you can get a sense of, of what this is and how enormous this is. Um, so I've gone and done a little bit of further research just to try to put that into a big framework and really understand what, what this means. Um, my research has revealed that the National Cabinet was established on the 13th of the 3rd 2020 which is that enormously significant date that I've already highlighted to our readers. This is the date of the beginning of the attack um, it's the beginning of the, the siege essentially as I've shown in the template um, but this is the date when Washington led by uh, President Donald Trump at the White House announced a national state of emergency which empowered FEMA, the Federal Emergency Management Agency. As a result what I've been saying is um, based on information from Celeste Salom, who was a FEMA whistleblower at the very highest level. She stated that what happened on that day was effectively a state of declaration of martial law in which the martial law code term was given at the White House at states for the care, sorry, for the welfare, health and well-being of the citizens. She says that this um, code was given in a Roman soldier phalanx method which means that there might be a group of people who are all Roman soldiers and they're all operating as a unit of one man. So one person who is a secret Roman soldier might begin the statement, somebody else might stand up and speak and they might have part of the code in their statement and somebody else might stand up and speak and they've got a part of the code in their statement. And that date again was the 13th of March 2020. 2020 and that was the day in America when Washington and all of America and I have been saying all Washington controlled governments came under FEMA and now we have the evidence. So what this tribunal 
that ruling has revealed is that in Australia on that very date this national cabinet was established which means that we now know the America the Australian government is a Washington corporation so when Washington made this judgment Australia has come under it and created this national cabinet which we now know from the ruling is illegal and the information that I have uh, from Wikipedia about the National Cabinet is that the Parliament is currently suspended. So in other words, the government is suspended in Australia.